Hi there. In this video I'll be answering part of a question from the National 5 specimen paper which relates to line spectra. Part D of the question says a line spectrum from a nebula is shown below and we see several spectral lines from the gases in the nebula. In case you didn't know a nebula is basically a cloud of gas and dust in outer space. The diagram also shows the line spectra from four elements nitrogen, helium, hydrogen and last but not least krypton. We're then asked to identify the elements present in the nebula. So to do that, all we have to do is compare the line spectra from each of the four elements in turn with the line spectra from the gases in the nebula. We'll start with nitrogen. If nitrogen is present in the nebula, then every line within its spectrum will be present in the line spectrum from the nebula. And you can see here that that's not the case. So nitrogen isn't present. If we look at helium, all of its spectral lines are present in the nebula's line spectrum. And it's the same for hydrogen. So they are both present. Finally, if we look at krypton, we can see that some of the spectral lines appear in roughly the same position in the line spectrum from the nebula. But remember for a gas to be present, each and every line in its spectrum would have to be present in the line spectrum from the nebula. So of course our answer is that helium and hydrogen are present in the nebula. I'd like to talk a little bit about the different types of spectra that you're expected to know about. Here we have a diagram of the Sun. It produces light at all wavelengths in the visible spectrum. If the light from the Sun alone was to pass through a prism, you would see something like this, a continuous emission spectrum. Colours with shorter wavelengths are refracted more, so the colours are split up in order of their wavelength. Here we have violet light on the left hand side, which has the shortest wavelength and greatest frequency. On the right hand side we have red light with the longest wavelength and smallest frequency. Now, what I didn't include in this diagram is the Sun's outer atmosphere, which consists of cooler gas, mainly hydrogen. When the light from the Sun passes through its outer atmosphere, certain wavelengths of light are absorbed, creating black lines in the continuous spectrum. This produces what's known as a line absorption spectrum. By measuring the wavelengths at which the black lines occur, we can identify the elements present in the Sun's outer atmosphere, as we can with any star. We'd also get a line absorption spectrum if we were observing a nebula with a star behind it. Obviously this diagram isn't to scale, and we're going beyond what we need to know for National 5. Just make sure that you can identify a continuous emission spectrum, a line absorption spectrum, and what you're about to see here, a line emission spectrum. If we were to observe a nebula, although this time the neighbouring star was not directly behind it, what we would see when passing the light through a prism would look like this, a line emission spectrum. By measuring the wavelengths at which the coloured lines appear this time, we can identify the elements present in the nebula. You've maybe observed line emission spectra in class by looking at the light produced by various spectral lamps through a device called a spectroscope. If you decide to study higher physics, then you'll learn how these coloured lines are produced, You'll also see how the light produced by stars can provide evidence for the Big Bang. Anyway, that's for another time, because that's the end of our video. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.